I was the one who escaped with him out of Jamaica after the shooting. Yeah, me and him. Didn't say a word the whole way through. We went to Nassau first, and then he went on to London. Don't worry about a thing. He just wanted to take a break. He wanted to not be looking over his shoulder. He wanted not to be dealing with the problem, not dealing with the controversy. He just wanted some free headspace to work, to make music, to tour. We moved immediately into Chelsea area, Oakley Street. It was a great experience because we're all together in this house. Well, on each floor, there was a different musician. There was uh, Tyrone Downey on one floor, Carlton Barrett on another floor, Family Man Barrett on another floor, Alvin Seco Patterson on another floor, Neville Garrick, I think, was in the basement sharing with somebody. We're a stone throw from Battersea Park Bridge. Once we went over the bridge, then you had the football field. God, we even played against some national front guys. We whooped them a couple of times over here. Did he feel like he was in exile? Yeah, man. But Bob was like deeply into creation of music. That's how I think he satisfied his soul. Bob, life was spared, and he was very happy to be alive. See, Jack gave him another chance. He was also confronted by his mortality. And when you think that these might be your last opportunities to do anything, you place a greater value on every moment, every second of every moment of every day. There's no time. We've got no time to lose. He slept basically about four hours a day. And he was always writing a song. And you, you know, you'd be up all night writing and he'd go, I'd say, oh, Bob, I gotta go to get some sleep now. He'd go, oh, just half an hour more. Half an hour would turn into four hours, you know? <laughs> 